Um, I want to stop right here before I put the final coat on it, you know, and get it, you know, to where it's going to be. At any rate, I want to, I haven't welded this yet. I want to pop that off and show you the difference, even at the second coat, the difference between raw stainless here and what we have. It's pretty cool. I mean, you can make something look really nice. Uh, I plan to, when I build the Uber buggy, I'm going to uh, do some stainless work on it, you know, like maybe the, the dash panel or whatever uh, and really polish it for real so anyway I was just gonna stop there and now we'll uh, we'll finish it out alright tubers uh, got the last coat of polish on it uh, really I could stand to take some rubbing compound what get the smudges off and everything but you can kinda see what what it's gonna look like uh, still haven't, I'm gonna pop this thing off I really wanna mount this a, a little different way I don't like the way these screws look or whatever so I'll figure something out with that but we're getting closer on the old uh, old test stand uh, I guess I'm gonna cut it off right here and uh, start uh, wiring everything up <clears throat> all right tubers we're back to the old uh, back to the old console here I went ahead what I did I just took my all my hot wires that I would need and grouped them together and just put a little zip tie on them there I don't like wires all jumbled up. It's just a mess if you have to go back and do any work. Um, I took this goes to my coil, my coil wire. I put it to the side and I grouped my grounds. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna make my connections. I'm just using uh, solderless connectors on these. I got three wires, which makes up one pretty big wire. So I'm using the blue. It's a it's your bigger gauge and we'll strip the wires I need them kind of long because I'm grouping so many together when I twist them up it'll get a little bit shorter somewhat so I want to make sure I have plenty of length this is my hot wire for my uh, light in the tack I definitely want to go ahead and hook the lights up in it Now, let's twist them all together. Just a little bit more wire there. Cool. All right. Just going to trim this off a little bit. There. Connector on it. I'm ready to crimp that bad boy. All right, tubers, I'm back. I've made a little progress. I've got uh, on the back of the console. I made up all my connections, so on and so forth, and put them in a little bit of a. This isn't heat shrink. I, I, heat shrink would actually do a little better job, I think. It's just a piece of tubing that came with the tack, you know, where these wires were supposed to group group into. Uh, I've got to get my oil my oil line hooked up on here. What I did with these, I just uh, went ahead because I didn't have uh, a lot of different color wire to use. I just went ahead and labeled them so I didn't get anything mixed up. Battery positive, you know, the starter that goes to my solenoid. Uh, the cool hot it is my tack wire it goes on the ground side of the cool uh, my ground so on and so forth it's just going to make it easier when I go to hook everything up but yeah, I think it's looking pretty good you know um, I'm getting there with it okay guys here's where we are with the uh, with the console for the test stand uh, been doing some wiring on it yeah I told you in a previous clip that I had it labeled so I've got my you know this is my starter wire I've got my hot wire that comes in here with my uh, battery cable and the uh, the tack wire which goes to the negative side of the coal and then I got my hot wire which is the red obviously gonna power the coal um, we're making some progress I think it's turning out okay uh, wasn't exactly what I'd originally envisioned but things tend they you know they they morph you know when you're 
when you're uh, going through a project. Anyway, uh, I've just temporarily got it set on there with those screws. I really want to <clears throat> fasten that on a better way. I don't like the way the screws look, but we'll see what happens. Anyway, I'm going to get back to work. I've got a lot to do, and uh, I'll catch you guys in the in the future segments of this. What I'm doing right now, <clears throat> got to get this stem down in my block. This is for. Um, my uh, <clears throat> oil pressure gauge where I'm using a manual gauge on here I'm gonna get the sending unit out ultimately what I'm gonna do with this is uh, I'm gonna I want to plumb with uh, to use you know the, the the idiot light or you know factory oil sending unit and I also want to plumb it for my uh, auto meter gauge which I have in the van right now so this is kind of buried in here as you've seen in previous videos I'm going to use the extension I'm going to come up you know and then I'm going to make a 90 and then I can have you know the oil sending unit plus the bulb I'm going to try to move it back this way you know where I can have better access you know when I really do plumb it in but what I got to do right now I'm going to get some Teflon on these threads and on these threads and let me take you over to the workbench and show you the rest of the the uh, pieces for this. So I've got my coupling here. That's going to accept my oil pressure line. And that's, you know, I'm going to go ahead and get all this put together and, and get it plumbed. And I'll be back with you. All right, guys. I got that, uh, got that all plumbed into the block there. Now, <clears throat> what I got to do... I took my the hose that they send with the kit and it's all cooled up and I, if you guys have ever messed with this you know how uh, yeah, hard it is to manage so I just took my jack handle on a pair of vice grips and I hung this thing up last night from my uh, track from my garage door to straighten it out because when I run it from under here you know and up along with these I didn't want it all you know going nuts on me up there so I just hung it up to straighten it out seems to have worked so I'm gonna go ahead and get the get the uh, oil pressure line ran and we'll get it we'll get it fit up into the uh, into the back of the gauge here and and get the wire ties and tie it down so I'm gonna I'll uh, get to that right now all right, guys. I got my uh, my ferrule and my nut on my line there. I just cut that scrap end off. I just push this the way I've I've always done this. I just push it back the, the tube as far as I can, you know. And just let it go back and seat, and then push this up to it. That way, you know you've got plenty of line in there for the ferrule to seal against. And I just snug it up. I never really put a great amount of torque on it. Alright guys, well, I got my uh, coal bracket. I forgot to paint it earlier, so I went ahead and cleaned it up and primed it. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and uh, make these ends up for my uh, coal. Where I've got to make those uh, connections. I'm going to go ahead and get it made up here. and uh, Then, I'm going to start on the battery box keep me busy while the while the paint's drying you know so it's moving along it's moving along I'm kind of you know I'm pretty happy with the progress it's uh I think it's gonna be a a good project in the end you know I think it'll work out okay really looking forward to uh, firing it up you know but I don't want to get in a big hurry. Seems like when I get in a hurry, that's when I start making mistakes and overlooking things I should have taken care of. So, trying to be patient with the whole pro pro uh, process there, and um, think it to be all right. It's going to turn out really good. So, anyway, I'm going to uh, get the angle iron out, and I'm going to start making battery box. So we'll take care of that.